California Senator Dianne Feinstein's mental decline was on full display during an interaction with a Democrat in Congress, according to the San Francisco Chronicle, as they prepared for a policy discussion in which the lawmaker said they had to reintroduce themselves to Feinstein multiple times during the interaction that lasted several hours. They said it appears that her memory is rapidly deteriora deteriorating and it appears she can no longer fulfill her duties that require her to represent nearly 40 million people in California, so she's 88 years old. She's up for re-election in 2024, I believe. Yeah. And she's filed paperwork. To, now it's a formality. She might not run. I mean, there's no way she can, but there's nothing stopping her. The depressing part is that these kinds of stories were coming up before her last run. They were. And nobody seemed to care. And to the extent that people raised this as an issue, a lot of them were dismissed as... Ageist. I ageist, heard that. sexist. How dare you not let a woman live out her time? It was very, like, RBG adjacent. Yeah. I remember, I seem to remember a story where a bunch of young, I'm talking like elementary school age climate activists, came to her office and asked her very gently because, you know, they're elementary school students, they weren't exactly aggressive, <laughs> whether or not she was going to do anything for the environment and Green New Deal and all of this stuff. Again, California, Green New Deal, children, this should be a very bucolic kind of a situation. And she called them jack booted tots. <laughs> Jack booted tots and basically asked them to get out of their office. The government and is supposed to be for the people and by the people and all you know for what's the interesting about this group is I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. You come in here and you say it has to be my way or the highway. I don't respond to that. I've gotten elected. I just ran. I was elected by almost a million vote plurality and I know what I'm doing so you know maybe people should listen a little bit I hear what you're saying but we're the people who voted you you're supposed to listen to us that's your how old are you I'm 16 you? I can't well, you vote you didn't vote for me well, she, I'm she voted. Voted. it doesn't matter we're the ones well, who are going to be impacted it doesn't we're matter we're, we're going to be the ones who are impacted yeah. I understand that I have seven grandchildren I understand it very well. Senator, the cost of and not taking this action is far higher than the cost of what the Green New Deal will be. And there is what, enormous popularity for this bill around okay. the whole country. Here's and we're asking you to be brave proposing. and do this for us and for your grandchildren. Sure. Get enough for okay. I'm trying to do the best I can which was to write a responsible resolution. Any plan that, that doesn't take bold, okay. transformative okay. action is not going to be what we need. We well, need your you know better than I do. So I think one day you should leadership. run for the Senate. This is who this person has you know, become. And certainly nobody is relishing somebody's mental decline. But you got to really ask yourself what is going on with the system that is holding on to her staying in office so tightly. Yeah, and after uh, Leahy retires, She'll be third in line for, she'll be technically the ranking, the eight oldest in the Senate. That's ridiculous. Now, I also want to point out that when these kinds of questions are being raised in the context of the Democratic primary, I remember there were two Democrats, presidential candidates, who are broadly liked and supported by the party, uh, who raised these issues. It was uh, Cory Booker and um, Julian Castro. And I remember them doing a presser after one of the debates during which Biden had been particularly seemingly not really it, with it. And they both very gently, kindly raised the issue in the spin room. And you never heard from it again about it again. No one ever brought it up on TV after that. And it seemed like those two were pushed off the debate stage very quickly after that. So there really does seem to be a system in place that protects these very, very aging senators, the Democrats are much older than the Republicans. It's hard to think of who the new talent is. It's hard to come up with like five senators under 60 yeah, on the Democratic yeah. side. And this is why. It, it's, it is a bigger problem on the Democratic side. There are a lot of old Republicans, too. Sure. Uh, Chuck Grassley is going to run for re-election. He's 88. Um, the average age of the Senate has just gone up and up and up over the years. We don't have... I don't, we have, I guess we have weaker parties. So my understanding is that in other countries, they don't have this problem as dramatically because like the party just pushes you out eventually mm. so that the, the younger people can take over. That doesn't happen here because there isn't as strong enough central party to say, 
these people gotta go, I guess. Yeah, and there's no accountability. There's no political accountability. You can be someone like Jim Clyburn, who's been in office for what? It's gotta be about 30 years at this point, right. who has never really faced a, a real primary challenger, never participates in debates. He's being challenged right now, I think, by two Democrats in the primary, but the odds, you know, frankly, are very slim that they're gonna break through. And he is a representative from one of the poorest districts in the country. Have you ever even heard anyone mention Jim Clyburn's district, what it's like, who lives there in South Carolina? No, we hear him as a kingmaker. We hear about his political bona fides. We hear about his power in the party. And no one asked the barest minimum of questions about whether or not he's actually delivering for his constituents with all the power that he has and, frankly, all of the money that he gets from these interests whose interests are antithetical to those of the people he represents, namely the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, he is the largest recipient of uh, money from the pharmaceutical industry in Congress. Yeah. You know, the, 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 if we were asking those kinds of questions, if people understood politicians in a context outside of their political power, then I think there would be a much stronger push either to get them out or to at least make them more attendant to their communities. Yeah, I mean, it becomes a national security concern at some point to have so many of your top government officials be, be so old and possibly, you know, past the state of mental preparedness yeah. that she's clearly exhibiting. I, you know, yeah. we have questions about Biden, obviously. I, I think he doesn't, uh, his ability to communicate well has totally deteriorated. Whether that, you know, reflects his actual mental state, I, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. He certainly does not communicate as easily as he did when he was President Obama. Oh yeah, look at look at old videos. The, the difference is obvious. And look, I'm not. I don't want to be ageist here. Right. There are plenty of older senators for whom this isn't. The cognitive di uh, isn't difference the case. at that age is is very stark. Right. Like Bernie clearly still. Bernie has still it with got it. it. Running Trump up and is down just as you know, lo lo love him or dislike him. He's clearly like he has not changed. Yes. He's still him. People like uh, Chuck Schumer, Elizabeth Warren. These are people you know in their 70s don't seem to have any cognitive issues. So that's not, it's not just an age issue. It's not a right. chronology issue, but this, Diane Feinstein. It's clearly, yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I don't know what the, but they can't, they can't force her to do anything. And, and you'll see the thing, because this would happen with, um, with RBG. Someone would say, <laughs> reasonably from your perspective, would say, she's got, she should go now so she can be replaced with someone of a similar ideology. And then you would see a backlash. Be like, no, nope, yes. that's ageist. She doesn't owe you a seat. Yes. It was like, okay, you're not, you're not playing the game here, friend. <laughs> no, and that is why the federal courts look like they do. If, if you, there's people who have charted out and studied when Republican um, federal judges step down strategically versus when Democrats do. Democrats, it's never strategic. Yeah. It's never strategic. And that has had a cumulative effect over the years, and, and we're screwed over it. And there were a lot of cheerleaders who were still out there on, on TV today, or on Twitter today, talking about who, who were the very people who said, oh, you were so sexist and horrible for trying to push RBG out, who will now turn to a progressive like myself and accuse us of having been responsible for the uh, deterioration of abortion rights across the country. I'm like, I'm not the one who was encouraging the octogenarian who regrettably was suffering from pancreatic cancer in the Obama administration to continue her reign because she wanted hubristically to have a woman president and Hillary Clinton replace her. That wasn't me. I'm guilty of a lot of things, but that one's not on me. Well, Breyer retired strategically. Yeah. So, so yeah. I, I, I think because of the, the nice little rhyming couplet, the, the retired Briar really did the, did the work. <laughs> that was that. That was it. <laughs> that's, well, I'll, that's what did I'll, it. I'll, I'll, I'll trust your judgment on that. <laughs> All right, we'll have more rising right after this.